Hey, what's up everyone? I am Todd with Film Bodega, and today I'm gonna to show you around a thing called Supermoger. Uh, what is Supermoger? Well, you just saw it. You wanna see it again? Right there, right there. Or you can do stuff like this, or this, or this. The options are uh, relatively endless. I wanna show you how it works. So what is Supermoger? How do you install it? How do you use it? Uh, why does it have such a goofy name? I will answer most of those questions for you right now. Let's dive in. So if you don't already know what a Mogurt is, it's basically a really cool thing that sort of bridges the gap between After Effects and Premiere. So if you aren't a motion graphics person or if you need to give someone a file who is not a motion graphics person, a Mogurt is a really good way to do it. And when, when you're in After Effects, you can basically just make a graphic that has certain parameters that you can control in Premiere. And then you give someone a Mogurt file and it's all in the Mogurt file and it's all ready to go right inside of Premiere where you don't need to open up After Effects to get a slick looking title. And so what I've done is over my many years of being a motion graphics person and an editing person, I've noticed that there's a lot of uh, very similar looks that I end up needing to have. So like a slick little line going across with some text kind of popping up or glitchy stuff or you know flickery text for like a hype reel things like that so basically what i did over the last i don't know well, so what we aimed for is a mogurt file that can be used for any type of project you would want to use it for and since i made this thing i will i'm being 100 percent honest i use it on almost every edit that i do it's just a lot easier instead of going back and forth between after effects with connected comps all that sort of stuff this is just one really quick easy way to do it all so to get to your mogurt files you'll go to window up here and you'll just make sure that you've got this essential graphics panel uh, checked and if it's not go ahead and check it for me it pops up right over here and so we've got the uh, essential graphics panel there's a browse tab edit tab uh, and in browse you'll find all of your mogers now these are you know a bunch of ones that i've made over the years kind of mixed in with some of the stock adobe ones um, and so if you wanted to you can just click this little button right here in the bottom right corner and that'll bring up an install box. You could go ahead and just install it uh, by clicking there, hit open, um, or you could even, if you wanted to, you could just uh, drag it right into this little window here and drop and it will uh, it, it install it right then and there. Um, but here is my favorite way to do it. Uh, you can basically have folders of your Mogurt files. Basically, uh, you know, if you have like graphics packages or templates that you use for particular projects, you can kind of bounce around in and out of these different uh, Mogurt folders, if you will. So my favorite way to install them is to go up here to this little hamburger icon kind of deal and uh, you hit that and go to manage additional folders. And uh, I've gone ahead and cleared everything out of here, but you can add as many folders as you want. So if you have a bunch of different Mogurt packs or whatever, you can install them all here and uh, just add one folder at a time. But I'm gonna go ahead and just install the folder that I have my Super Mogurt saved in. So I'm gonna hit add. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit, uh, so this is called current final. That's the folder that I have my Super Mogurt uh, saved in. I'm going to hit select folder and then uh, it adds it right here and then I'm going to hit OK. So nothing's happened yet. Uh, what we need to do is click this local checkbox and then we get this little drop down and boom right there you'll see our current final folder and right there in all of its glory there's Super Mogur ready to go just waiting for you just waiting for some input. So uh, let's uh, let's do some stuff all right. And uh, all we got to do now is just drag Super Mogurt right on onto the sequence. Uh, so the thing that's really cool about Mogurts is that you don't have to duplicate a bunch of files or whatever. If you want to make changes and leave the old one the same, you can just hit Alt, drag, click and drag. And now we've got two Super Mogurts. I can ch make changes to one, make changes to the other, and the changes will be retained. So um, that's another benefit of Mogurts. But when you click on a Mogurt file in your sequence, it will change your essential graphics panel from the browse tab to the edit tab okay and here's where we have all of our uh, changeable parameters uh, we've got text right here pretty straightforward we'll go we'll go through that here in a minute we've got animation select now that's the fun part or one of the fun parts and then we've got objects and we've got background 
and we've got style options, okay? And I'll try to kind of go through all of these a little bit, show you some tricks with them all. Um, but let's start with text. First off, I'm gonna go ahead, just cause I want a clean slate, I'm gonna turn off the box. It starts in this initial state. This is just how I set it up when you, by default, drag it in. But if you go to the objects drop down, you'll see this box option here. And uh, we'll just click toggle for now and that'll just turn it right off, okay? So then we'll go up to text. Let's just, you know, let's type uh, film bodega. Okay, and that's the name of our company. Let's change the font. Um, let's do, let's do like, uh, I like this font Visby. I've been playing with this one a lot lately. Uh, so boom, film bodega. And uh, so now we can change the size. We can, uh, you know, do all caps. We can, you know, it has most of the uh, the faux options there. And then you can, you can, uh, if you want to, you could turn down the, the text opacity and just make it str stroke only. So if you wanted to have stroke text, you could do that. You can change the color of your stroke text, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, let's turn that back on. Um, and if you want to, we, we can also change the text tracking. So this changes the spacing. If you want to do multiple lines, you just add a line break. And then now we can change the uh, line spacing. So if you want to, you know, give stuff a little more breathing room, you can do that. If you want to just change the overall text scale, overall text position, all that sort of stuff, we got those options right here. And uh, let's go into the animation select. Now this part is, uh, this, is where, this is where a lot of the fun can happen. So we've got 14 different animations here, uh, fast flicker, repeater. Um, these all are just kind of very standard text reveal animation type things that, like I said, I've done all the time and I just wanted to stop having to go in After Effects, do it all again every single time. So I made a Mogurt where I can just click a box and boom, there we go, we got it. And so I tend to use this, you know, it's a very standard rise in animation. It's just got a really nice little eased keyframe on it, just real quick and dirty. And you'll notice after a period of time, it goes ahead and animates itself right back off the same way that it came in. Um, so one thing that I really like about Super Mogurt is it's created with responsive time enabled. So you can make it as long this make it 44 seconds if you want. And then the animation is still going to happen on the front and the end. If you don't want the animation on one side, you just cut it. So boom, cut. And now we've cut off the animated part. And if we shorten it again, we still don't have the animation out. We've got a whole bevy of options here. Scale up, scale down, scale up is, you know, they all kind of do what they sound like they're gonna do. This one scales in. Um, then we got, uh, you know, fall in, which is obviously the inverse of rise in. Yeah, we got like slide right. I use this one all the time for lower thirds, things like that. And then uh, these are super fun. We got like fast flicker. This is really good for like a hype reel or something like that. Um, we've got like the repeater one like that. Um, I really like glitch on glitch on is fun to play with like that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, a there's a lot you can do there, um, with all these different animations. Now, one thing you want to make sure that you do is if, if any of them are checked, you can have, I mean, you can accidentally have like eight different animations turned on. So I recommend just making sure you only have one. Sometimes I do some cool stuff with like glitch and repeater turned on at the same time. So, you know, it does some kind of really, really trippy stuff, really going for that hype real look. You can do some fun stuff with that. What we can do now is uh, we'll go into the objects options here. And uh, in here we've got, you already saw before, we got the box and uh, these have all the same types of options that you saw before with the text. Um, so you can change the scale, the width, all that sort of stuff. Um, Say if you want to go for like a different, you know, more rounded box, you can change the actual roundness of the box. Um, and you can even go all the way to like fully round. You can just really uh, start dialing in a look and this will animate in as well. Then we've got horizontal line. Uh, that's a thing that, you know, you'll use that all, all the time and it animates on really nice. Um, and obviously you can change the thickness. You can change the color. Bada bing, bada boom. Uh, very similar, we have the vertical line, which is, uh, you see this all the time, especially again with lower thirds. And then we've got bullet points. Um, now this is fun. If you're trying to do a bullet list, 
there's a lot of different stuff you can do with that. So here, this slider is going to show how many bullets you have. Uh, so let's, you know, if you do something like five or something like that, and uh, you know, you can change the like the the spacing between the different bullets if you want. You can make them real far apart, real spaced out, and you can even change the scale of the the actual circles themselves. Uh, so that's another thing you can do. So if you really, if you wanted to go crazy, you could have one one bullet point make the scale super super big, and then you've got a circle. Now let's talk about backgrounds. Um, so backgrounds, we have a few different cool options. We've got animated background or still background. And so yeah, if you use the animated background option, it uh, it'll animate on, real nice and smooth. And uh, if you don't want the animation uncheck that and check still background. Now it's it's not going anywhere. It's just going to stay put. Um, so that's good for a lot of different things. And then uh, let's go back to animated background. We've got vignette uh, opacity. So I've got a little vignette on here just so it looks kind of nice and snazzy. So if you want to, you can turn that off or turn it down, whatever you want to do. Uh, and then we've also got this, uh, this gradient option here. This is a four color gradient. Uh, it's a lot of fun to play with, get some cool looks with it. And so, yeah, I mean, in the, the little colors and the gradient animate around and stuff. So it's super, it's super cool, really quick way to get some snazzy looks going. And uh, let's go to the style options. Now here are some pretty fun things. Okay, so in style options, we've got this pencil texture uh, check, which is kind of, it's like a double as like a texture-y kind of thing, uh, and maybe even grain, uh, and you can play with the amount. So as I turn it up, you kind of see you get almost like a, construction paper look especially on your text and the box and stuff so here you can go as subtle or not subtle as you want to go um that almost looks like felt or something when you turn it all the way up i like it probably right around 30 34 something like that uh we've got this hand-drawn wiggle you can check that and uh that kind of adds this sort of bumpy it almost looks like it's been animated type feel and then just to uh, keep that animation feel going we've got stop motion which that's going to kind of give it posterized time like i think it's one out of every seven frames now uh so it's just a little choppy uh and that's kind of a popular look that i i tend to use pretty often so and so with that you can just get kind of a little hand-drawn uh pencil-y vibe going just a totally different look so let's do like kind of a little neon look right um let's go to our text options we're gonna turn down the opacity all the way and we're gonna go with only a stroke here um let's go ahead and change it over to the glitch on look here and uh yeah we've got a neon option i'm gonna turn off the background as well it doesn't really fit the neon vibe and uh, let's go around with the box, turn down the stroke width. So we got like a little neon sign vibe going. And uh, yeah, that's what I mean, that's what I love about this thing. You can kind of just change it up in no time at all, get a different look going. Um, so I'll turn on the glow and now boom, now we've got a glowing sign. Uh, so we can change the threshold of the glow. So that's kind of where where it's going to glow or what it's looking at to glow and how much we can change the radius of the glow so how much it spreads out uh so i'm gonna set it right about in there and then you can change the intensity um maxes out at four turn it down if you want real subtle glow you can do something like that um so i'll go back up to about two something like that and you can even change the color of the glow so if you want it to be kind of a purpley glow um you know or whatever whatever color you want uh yeah let's do let's do like a something like that whatever i mean that doesn't look good at all but uh you get the idea so now we've got like a cyberpunk neon glitchy thing going and uh we didn't even go into after effects at all so yeah it's super helpful super fun and in a really short amount of time you can just whip together a bunch of different cool stuff um just have fun experiment um, everything in this trailer that we made for the product, I did directly in Premiere. I didn't use any After Effects for this trailer, so that should give you a good idea of like what uh, you, you can do if you just experiment with this thing a little bit. What I recommend, first just start layering things. Um, that's like with the bullet list, you can just layer seven different copies of Super Moga together and make a you know animated bullet list. Um, and, and, you know, you'll be surprised at how, you know, actually responsive it is. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this. I, I mean, it, it's really, it kind of came together very uh, organically. I just kind of kept making 
more and more changes to this over the last year or so. Maybe there will be a Super Mogart V2 eventually, but yeah, have fun with this thing. I hope it saves you all a lot of time. Uh, and I hope, I hope you enjoy it as much as I have. So yeah, thanks guys. <laughs>